Wondering how to achieve success in your career while honoring your faith? Well, Inside Edition's Megan Alexander gives us an inside look at her faith in the spotlight and shares how you can thrive while being true to your beliefs on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, good morning and welcome to the show. It's been proven that starting off your day with positive affirmations can set a great tone for how your day unfolds. An uplifting father-daughter video is giving Facebook users the morning motivation they need. Take a look. Look at yourself. Look in your eyes. You got to see it, okay? You got to feel it. You ready? You ready for school? Yeah. Is it going to be a good day? A really good day? You're going to be positive? Say, I am strong. I am strong. Say, I am smart. I am smart. Say, I work hard. I work hard. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I am respectful. I am respectful. Yeah. Say, I'm not better than anyone. I'm not better than anyone. Nobody's better than me. No one's better than me. I am amazing. I am amazing. I am great. I am great. What's your name? Aaliyah Austin. If you fall? I get back up. What are you? I'm blessed. Yes. Say thank you, God. Thank you, God. For making me. For making me. The greatest. The greatest. There's nobody. There's nobody. Better. Better. Than me. Than me. All right, give me five. Give me kiss. Let's go. Well, if she's not going wow. to school with the steam, I don't know who is today. <laughs> <laughs> that dad, Ron Alston Jr., posted this video, and it has had over 150 wow. million views worldwide. He says that parents have a responsibility, saying, quote, in today's society, it's so important for children to be self-confident, humble, and have a sense of self-esteem, especially our young women. Every child is destined for greatness, and it's our job to get them there. Go, Dad. Wow. Yeah. Ron should be the father to the world. That is a <laughs> great thing to do. I yeah. can't say uh, enough about how great that is, to instill that as part of their identity as they grow up to say, uh, I can really be somebody. I, I've always encouraged parents, please don't curse your children. Mm. Uh, please don't prophesy doom over them. Uh, prophesy greatness. Prophesy mm -hmm. achievement. And I love how he, Ron added into their humility to say, yeah. I'm not better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful thing. And a little thing. gratitude with, I am blessed. <laughs> I am blessed. I am blessed. Way to go, Ron. Yes. <laughs> well, in other news, a Christian and a Muslim have come together to produce a new version of the Quran, a full text English edition of the book, but with a twist. This new Quran has parallel verses from the Holy Bible. And Dr. Safi Kaskas, a Muslim businessman, and Dr. David Hungerford, an orthopedic surgeon who is a practicing Christian, compiled this new Quran in hopes that it will foster greater understanding and help bridge the divide between Christians and Muslims. So, Terry, what do you think about this? Uh, I guess a, a Bible annotated Quran. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that the, um, the endeavor is probably made with great sincerity. I just don't know when there's such a great divide. If you, it, It's not so simple as just bringing them together and hoping everybody understands well. I mean, to me, one of the problems that we have is that we're sort of looking at people who are extremists, but at the same time, there are some basic truths there that are a part of the Quran, and how do you do that? Well, most, most Western scholars who study the Quran which comes after the Bible, um, say it's, it's obvious Muhammad had a Bible mm -hmm. and was exposed to both Judaism and Christianity. And that's why there are these parallel passages. Uh, they're just subtle differences. Um, you know, but you can't be love your neighbor. Uh, you know, in Christianity is everybody. Yes. And the question, who, who was the neighbor and the story of the Good Samaritan? 
uh, in the Quran, it, it becomes love your brother. Mm. So it means love your fellow Muslim. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. love others around you, even if they're estranged from you. Uh, so they don't have that, that same thing. For, for me, uh, it would be great if uh, Christians stopped being killed in the yeah. Middle East by Muslims. Wouldn't that be a good starting point for bringing us together? Uh, there's been more persecution of Christians in Egypt in the last three years uh, mm -hmm. than in the previous hundreds. Uh, so you look at the rise of, of persecution, whole, whole communities of Assyrian Christians, Chaldean Christians, Babylonian Christians, all wiped out in the past decade and a half, um, where millions of Christians have either been killed or forced into exile or forced into refugee camps, uh, and it would be great if that would stop. Yeah. Well, all in the name of Islam. Islam, right. So, you know, that's what I'm saying is the disparity is pretty significant. And within there. our culture, we can't even name it for that. Yeah. Um, it has to be some other term, um, not, you know, and, you know, I understand that position, and, and we need to keep in mind ISIS uh, was kicked out of uh, Al Qaeda because they were too extreme. Yeah. So, but that doesn't that mm -hmm. doesn't explain Egypt. Egypt yeah. is Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, that doesn't explain Saudi Arabia, where it's illegal to have a Bible and you can be put into prison for having a Bible. Mm -hmm. That doesn't explain Iran, where if you're having a church meeting in your house, you go to jail. So. Yeah. We, so you look at the two men coming together to do this, and I, I'm not quite sure I totally understand what the end goal is. Well, I think, I think the, the effort is noble in its exactly. uh, motivation, but at the same time, what divides the communities is yeah. rather, rather extreme. And, and real. <laughs> well, we have a heartwarming story for you now. An act of kindness from an officer was given, who, has, who gave another hope to a man. Mark Ross posted this picture on his Facebook saying that he received a call that his sister was killed in a car accident. Mark instantly hit the road trying to make his way to Detroit when he got pulled over in Ohio for speeding. Mark knew he'd likely go to jail for a petty warrant, but police from that county refused to come pick him up. Mark then broke down crying, explaining to the officer that pulled him over that his sister had just died. Well, what the officer did next surprised him. The policeman reached over and began praying over me and my family. He offered to bring me 100 miles further to Detroit because they towed the vehicle. Everybody knows how much I dislike police, but I'm truly grateful for this guy. He gave me hope. So well, way Maybe to that'll go. change your dislike for, <laughs> yeah. for the police. Yeah. Uh, and I think we need to come together as a community. And that's one mm -hmm. where I do have hope the two yeah. communities can come together. Uh, we need to now more than ever. Well, now for some not so heartwarming news. A satanic club will now be an option for students at Portland, Oregon Elementary School. The Park Rose School District recently approved the launch of the club at Sacramento Elementary School. The satanic temple has been targeting schools with good news clubs whose purpose is to evangelize. Uh, and Oregon is the first state in the U.S. to approve satanic after-school programs in public schools. And please don't get upset with the elementary school here or with the school district for doing this. Uh, what they're doing is trying to keep the good news uh, clubs open. These are voluntary. Mm -hmm. A parent has to sign permission uh, for the student to go to that club. And in order to prevent a legal challenge that you're not available to all faiths, um, then if a satanic club wants to organize, uh, they get to. It's, this is all a setup uh, for a lawsuit. So don't get mad at the state of Oregon. Don't get mad at the school district. Um, but understand what's really happening here. They're trying to shut down the good news clubs, which are organized to help train um, uh, students in the principles of the Bible. Uh, and their parents have to say, yes, that would be good for my child. Uh, these are all voluntary. These are all after school. Um, and it's all based on volunteers who want to do it. And so that's what's really going. They're trying to shut down the good news clubs. They're not trying to promote Satanism, although maybe, maybe they are. They're trying to promote atheism is the underlying. And we need to uh, 
Yeah. We need to pray. Well, if you ever thought there wasn't a movement against faith, God, people of faith in our country, I mean, the, this kind of thing, you just... Well, it's been going on since the 1960s. And um, once you start making the claim that praying in public or praying in school is somehow illegal, uh, then there's a gradual erosion of our freedom of religion. Uh, the rights guaranteed us by the Bill of Rights, that you have the right to pray in public. Uh, you have the right to pray in school. As long as it's initiated by you, you have that right. And these are all efforts to try to keep uh, children from praying, from keep children from understanding the Bible, uh, and keep our society on a track to increasingly become agnostic, atheistic. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to pray. And so here at CBN, we're in a 40-day nationwide Pray for America campaign, and we'd love you to, to come and join us. So we're asking you, will you pledge to pray? If you want to, all you have to do is visit PrayForAmerica.com, or you can call us, 1-800-700-7000. We want all 50 states covered in prayer, uh, and this is all coinciding with uh, the, the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles, Rosh Hashanah, uh, Yom Kippur, we want to lead America back into repentance. Uh, righteousness exalts a nation. And when the righteous get together and pray and say, Lord, turn our hearts, turn ourselves back to you, we want to be pleasing in your sight. And then when we humble ourselves and pray, we can, we can count on this promise that he will heal, heal our land. So join with us. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. Well, coming up, Inside Edition's Megan Alexander joins us live. She'll talk about what it takes to make it while staying true to your beliefs. You don't want to miss her. She's next, right after this. Inside Edition's Megan's, uh, Megan Alexander built a successful career in the competitive world of television. And she says you can excel in any career and still stay strong in your faith. Take a look. She reports from NFL sidelines, rides on elephants, and hangs out with orangutans. She's Inside Edition's Megan Alexander. For the past 10 years, she's built a career in an industry that oftentimes conflicts with Christian values. In her book, Faith in the Spotlight, Megan shares why she chose a job in television and gives examples of how and why believers should lead in the workplace. Well, joining me now is Inside Edition's Megan Alexander. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Terry. Uh, we mentioned you chose a career in television, but it's not so easy to just say, gee, I think I'll work in TV and right. go get a job. How did that open up for you? Yeah, well, from a young age, I enjoyed performing, telling stories, communicating, but I was involved with a lot of different things growing up. Played sports, tried out for the school play, <laughs> music, you got it. Um, but then, you know, as I decided what I wanted to do, you know, I wasn't necessarily overly encouraged in, in my high school or in my faith to pursue this mm -hmm. career. But I had a really neat conversation in high school with a friend of mine. His father's a pastor, and we were talking about what we wanted to study in college, and I sort of apologized. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I want to get into TV. It's not a pastor. It's not a doctor. And he said, hey, Megan, every job is a ministry. Every job could be a mission field. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, one thing sort of leads to the next, but at the end of the day, it comes down to hard work and tenacity. Yeah. I cold called radio stations, finally got a Did classical you? radio station to give me the midnight to 6 a.m. <laughs> shift. So you take what it's you can get. Dues. Yeah. <laughs> Paying your dues. Exactly. And then yeah. one thing, leads to the next and I you know you show up early you go home late mm -hmm. and you just try to prove yourself yeah. you know that area of of work is often challenging of the values that you and I would hold together as believers have you been challenged along the way with things that conflicted with your faith and how did you handle it sure well, you know, getting into the industry, first I wanted to be known for good work. Yeah. I want to be an excellent reporter, an excellent host, do the best that I can do. And I have a chapter in the book called A Seat at the Table. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage believers to take a seat at the table, do excellent work, get in the room yeah. when a decision is made. But then along the way, every day is different in terms of figuring out how your faith is going to apply. And Terry, honestly, that's why I wrote the book, because I would have loved a guide going into this industry and figuring out what that means. So we tackle all kinds of practical things like 
negotiating a contract, asking for a raise, finding a mentor, dealing with workplace drama, what it means for your family as a working mm-hmm. woman. How's that going to work with child care and so forth? So, yeah, it, on, in terms of on the job, I would say trying to be yourself in the moment. I have a quick story for you. Uh, at Inside Edition, we often cover the Academy Awards, what mm-hmm. the stars wear on the red carpet. A particular reality star had walked the red carpet in a white dress that I just, it was incredibly revealing, mm-hmm. showing a lot of skin. And as the female reporter on the show, they often ask me to model that dress the next day, ah. find a replica that's much mm-hmm. less expensive than what the stars were. But I just was uncomfortable. But instead of just saying no, because mm-hmm. I can't stop the train, I'm on a show, I enjoy everybody I work with, I said, hey, how about a plan B? Let's go with this dress. I know we can make this work. I got some pushback. No, 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 we want you to wear this dress from the stylist. Mm-hmm. said, I know we can, we can work the problem here. So that's my passion is there's a way that you can still live out your faith and, and stay you know, true in the job, values. true to yourself, yeah. but mm-hmm. be a team player. Yeah. You know, we saw a piece earlier from Facebook where a dad was so encouraging his young yes. daughter. Who have been the people in your life who've inspired you to hold fast to what you believe, but to keep pressing forward with what you feel called to? Sure. Again, first and foremost, it was that uh, pastor that told me every job is a mission field. Words like that matter. They make mm-hmm. a big impact on our lives. Yeah. Um, my parents told me to go for it. They said, we don't know anybody in the industry, so we can't help you. <laughs> but go for your dreams and goals. Yeah. Boo who you're called to be. And then just along the way, finding mentors from afar, people that I admire, working women that I think do a good job maintaining it. Deborah Norville, who's the anchor yes, of our show, is a big yeah. role model. What about the red carpet? You know, you talked about the dress that was revealing, but just in general, I mean, everything about that is so surreal compared to day to day life and yet there you are having to stand next yeah. to people who are almost like royalty yeah do you feel insecure from time to time absolutely i'm human everybody is um and in those moments you know you need to take a step back and remember that everybody has bad hair days yeah that a lot of those photos are airbrushed <laughs> yeah and i really want to lift the veil with this book terry and remind people that you know we think those celebrities have life perfect, but hey, they have a hair and makeup team and 12 hours to get yeah. ready. Yeah, if you can't look good after that, yeah. you can't look good. Right, right? <laughs> exactly. But I also want to encourage people yeah. that, you know, you don't have to look like somebody else. I have had people say to me in my career, don't try out for that. You don't have the look. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, I just want to get some feedback. I just want to go for the experience. And then in the moment, the casting director said, oh, well, I didn't think of you for this role, but yeah, maybe you would work. I want young people, especially women, to know you're made exactly as you're supposed to be. Speaking of looking back, you know, the last time we had a chance to visit, you had taken such a stand on purity and not really, uh, I guess, an issue today or a position today that would be common in our culture, and yet you stood up strongly for it. You talk about it in the book, you know, the significance of it. Talk a little bit about the the impact we can have when we're willing to stand up and be counted in the midst of a place that might not share our beliefs. Sure. Well, that was a personal decision that I never really thought I would talk about publicly. Yeah. I made that decision early on and found a husband that agreed with me on that, a future husband that <laughs> then eventually became my husband. Um, and But we decided, you know, people aren't talking about it enough, and young people are faced with so much pressure Every day. nowadays. Every day. It's just not a part of the conversation. And I, some, your, sometimes your personal choices affect your professional life. And my husband and I said, hey, if it encourages one person, yeah. It's worth it. And once I spoke out about it, Terry, there have been such neat moments where people have pulled me aside and said, hey, I thought I was the only one. Yeah. Thank you for speaking out. That's why we decided to include it in this book because, again, it's you want faith to be in all areas of your life. And not just, not just for speaking out and making the issue public, but for letting young people know you can still move forward in what you want to do absolutely. and hold on to your values. Yes, you know, absolutely. The, the book, Just Out, Faith in the Spotlight, what's the takeaway? What do you want people to walk away from after they read this? Yeah, well, the idea for this book came from a pastor in Seattle that wrote to me and said, I have a church full of young, ambitious women Mm -hmm. with big career goals and dreams, but they're worried they're going to need to compromise their faith to get ahead. I don't have a lot of people to point them towards, but I know of you. I wrote this book for them, Terry. tried to tackle it from a variety of angles. Mm -hmm. I believe in order to change culture, we must engage directly with culture and do it with excellence. 
comes out of relationship. Thank you, Megan. Thank what a, you. What a great word. If you'd like to learn more about thriving while holding on to your faith, get Megan's book. It's available wherever books are sold. The title is Faith in the Spotlight. Plus, check out our Facebook page right after the show. We have a special behind-the-scenes interview with Megan, and so we're thrilled to have her here. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Terry. Gordon? Well, up next, he proudly served his country overseas, and then his family embarked on a different kind of mission. It seems like a crazy, crazy time to get a foster license. Are we going to be able to make sure that everything is in place for the child to be comfortable and happy? See how viewers like you help them accomplish their goal when we come back. Erund and Christina had a dream to foster and adopt children. But suddenly, several large expenses threatened to interfere with making their dream a reality. That's when CBN's Helping the Homefront gave this military family a hand up. For 19 years, Aaron has served as a United States Marine, maintaining crucial radio and computer systems. I'm proud to serve my country because I feel that uh, this is the greatest country on earth, and I feel that. God blesses our country because of the people that serve. Aaron and his wife, Christina, like most military families, find deployments very challenging. My faith is absolutely necessary to get through deployments. When you're in that situation, you're in that place, everybody starts thinking a little bit more about what if something really bad were to happen. Our faith absolutely helps us take comfort that, you know, everything is going to be okay. Another challenge the family is facing is financial. They incurred several sudden large expenses, including funeral costs when Christina's mother died. It all made their dreams to foster and adopt children much more difficult. Are we gonna be able to make sure that everything is in place for the child to be comfortable and happy? The repairs that we have on the vehicle, we actually had our second vehicle die. And it seems like a crazy, crazy time to get a foster license. Still, they believe God will make a way for them to proceed. And we're going to do it. And it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be glorious chaos. Their church, New Song Community in Oceanside, California, contacted Helping the Homefront and asked if we could help with the family's expenses. We gladly agreed. Pastor Hal Seed was happy to deliver the good news. You know, I've pastored Marines like you guys for 24 years, and I have never I had the privilege of giving uh, the news that I'm going to give you. So I'm delighted to tell you that uh, your mother's funeral expenses are going to be paid by CBN. The third seat you need in your SUV so you can adopt, we've arranged for a mechanic to install that for you. And your vehicle that you need fixed, they're going to take care of the repairs on that too. And then there's the shopping spree to take care of clothes and furniture and all those sorts of things as well. I think for me, it's mind blowing. Um, because we aren't used to being blessed in this way. That day, CBN took Erin and Christina to have their van repaired. Then it was time for a shopping spree for baby furniture and other items. This hardworking Marine family can now focus on welcoming children into their home with full hearts and every need met. This is absolutely an answer to prayer, and this isn't the picture that I had in my mind. So it's very interesting to see how God works um, way, way better than my plan or way better than what I would have thought of. Helping the home front, we want to help military families. Uh, just imagine the number of deployments. Imagine being a family where your spouse has multiple deployments. And uh, when you look back over the last 16 years, um, this is the longest war in America's history. And so families are hurting. And, and how, do, how can we help them? How can we honor their service? Because if you're in a military family, you're serving too. Uh, and, and we want to help you. So if you want to be a part of it, part of helping the home front, all you have to do is call us 1-800-700-7000. Say, I want to help. I want to be a part of helping military families. Uh, and just give. And if you don't want to call us, you can also log on to 700clubinteractive.com.
Tara? Well, if you like the stories that you see on this show, check out our website at 700clubinteractive.com. You can watch interviews, testimonies, send us your prayer needs. Speaking of that, we've received a few requests. Miguel writes, I have cancer. I'm undergoing chemotherapy. It's really tough on me and my family. Please pray for God to heal me completely. And then Luan, Luan says, I just had knee surgery. I'm in a lot of pain. On top of that, I now have a blood clot in my leg. And then we've got an extra one from Lisa who wants to have a baby and it hasn't happened yet. Please All pray. Right. Let's pray. Lord, we just lift these needs to you. Jesus. And we just declare over each one that you are the answer to every human need. You're our provider. You're our deliverer. You're our savior. You. You're our healer. So, Lord, stretch forth your hand mm -hmm. to do miracles today. And for those watching right now, let them learn that they can lean into you for all their needs. Do it, Lord. Comfort your people today, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. I have a wonderful word for you. It's in Colossians chapter 3. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. For all of us here, God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow.